Hi. I'd like to ask you if you do see any prospects for a short-term or medium-term withdrawal of American troops from Iraq. You, you seem pessimistic in your presentation. You talked about the front runners for the Democratic candidates more or less ruling it out during the first term. And yet, um, like a year ago or so, the Iraq study group, very mainstream group, seemed to be talking seriously about withdrawing troops. And also another part of your presentation, you were talking about the costs of the war and perhaps how they're impacting the U.S. dollar and so on. So many people can see those costs as well. So if you see openings that way. Um, well, yeah, I am pessimistic uh, because and that's why I cite the documents that I did and looking at the hard evidence on the ground, um, these are permanent bases. Uh, they won't call them permanent uh, military bases, but they're the same size, some of them even bigger than the, the, excuse me, the bigger U.S. bases in places like Germany and Japan and South Korea, and they don't call those bases permanent either, and they never will because they're on contracts with the host country, host country, that have to be renewed depending on the contract every two years, three years, five years, half a year, whatever. And so they don't call them permanent bases, and they'll never call them permanent bases in Iraq. But look at these bases, and I think I maybe talked about this last time I was here, but for example, Camp Anaconda, an air base uh, just north of Baghdad, 30,000 soldiers stationed there, uh, less than 1,000 of whom ever leave the base whatsoever. Uh, they're lengthening both of the runways as we speak. The already air-conditioned troop quarters have overseas phone lines, cable TV, uh, internet connections in all the rooms. Uh, we have two base exchanges, huge shopping complex nature uh, base exchanges on, on, the, uh, on the base. There's an Avis rent-a-car agency. That's how big the base is. Uh, there's uh, Popeye's Fried Chicken, there's Starbucks, there's Subway, there's Burger King, uh, we can uh, Pizza Hut, AT&T phone home centers. So keep breathing. Keep we can breathing. go on. We can go on down the list. I mean, there's a first-run movie theater, meaning they see movies there when we get them new here. There's a swimming pool. There's a weight gym. There's yoga studios. I mean. You get where I'm going with this. So at what point does the U.S. say, all right, looks like everything's better. Here's the keys, Iraqis, to the base. You know, have fun with that. I mean, there's a reason why Bush, less than six months ago, when he was asked, can you even give an idea of what the timeline of Iraq, the occupation is? And he said, well, we need to be thinking about it in terms of South Korea. So how long have those bases been there? And that's why that, coupled with the hard evidence on the ground, the so-called U.S. Embassy being built in the middle of Baghdad to house a thousand people the size of the Vatican City, uh, heavily, heavily fortified. Um, but they did learn from Vietnam. This one has two helipads. Um, um, and uh, with the documentation, and then you look at the politicians, I mean, there is no more two-party system in the U.S. And so I am pessimistic. And I think, being realistic, I think that the collapse of the, the dollar and then, therefore, the U.S. economy is, is uh, going to be a positive thing. I mean, at least it will, I mean, it will cause complete chaos and probably violence in the United States, but um, it will make it a lot more difficult for them for, uh, for, uh, a lot more difficult for them to be exporting their violence across the globe.